Perfect. Okay. Uh, welcome to, to my session uh, about getting started with PyTorch 2.0 and Hugging Face Transformers. Uh, to me, I'm, I'm Philip. I'm technical lead at Hugging Face. Um, at Hugging Face, I'm leading our partnerships with AWS and Azure. I love to share and build tutorials and examples for generative AI and LLM. So maybe you have seen some of my blog posts in the past. I started with Bird in 2018. Back then, Transformers was called PyTorch Transformers. So you heard already earlier, PyTorch or Hugging Face was a very early adopter of PyTorch. And currently uh, at Hugging Face, also in my, my like, time I have left, um, I'm spending most of them on LLM and how we can use human feedback to improve our models. Uh, before we get into the talk, I would like to ask you some questions. So like, who of you have used Hugging Face in the uh, past? Please raise your hand. OK, wow. That's that's a lot. Okay, then who of you have uh, who of you have used Hugging Face with PyTorch uh, 2.0 features? Okay, that that's a little bit less hands. So hopefully, the ones of you who have used uh, Hugging Face before will now use or use it after the session with PyTorch 2.0, since it's like super easy and you will get a lot of benefits from it. So. Our goal for today is to learn about the new features of PyTorch 2.0. We have heard about the features from PyTorch 2.1 uh, this morning. Um, we take a quick look at the Hiking Face ecosystem. Then we'll see how we can fine tune BERT uh, with Transformers and PyTorch 2.0. And then, like I think the most interesting part is compare the performance of PyTorch uh, 1. Point, uh, with PyTorch 2.x. Uh, on a real-world example, and then um, maybe some additional insights where else you can use PyTorch 2 in the Hugging Face ecosystem. So what's new with PyTorch 2.0? Before we look into it, uh, we have heard this morning from Joe, I think, that the initial re release of PyTorch was in 2016. Uh, back then, from like the Facebook or FAIR research institution, then 2018, PyTorch uh, became production-ready with PyTorch 1.0, and then five years later, Earlier this year, we had PyTorch uh, 2.0. Um, and I think one of the most exciting features, at least for us at Hiking Face, is that we got an accelerated Transformers implementation with more uh, memory efficient attention. It's basically a new implementation, which is faster and uses less um, memory to compute uh, the attention mechanism. And um, on the right side, here we have some comparison with PyTorch 1.13. Um, and then like the lower the bar is, the, the faster it is. And uh, what we are missing here is, um, I think in August, um, Py, uh, Flash Attention 2 came out, which hopefully will be there in PyTorch 2.2. And then the, the, the training time per batch will be even faster. And then also when we look at uh, transformers or popular transformer models, we can see speed ups of 20% in training time for uh, a single A10 G GPU on AWS, which is pretty impressive if we like just need to change one line of code or like patch our attention mechanism and get like 20% cost reduction. Then, of course, there's Torch Compile, which is an extra um, performance boost. And with Torch Compile, we are now able to compile our models for faster training and also now faster inference. Um, those numbers, I think, is, are now outdated. Those numbers were from like PyTorch 2.0. I think with PyTorch 2.1. Um, we went up 50% as well. I cannot remember the exact numbers we have seen this morning, but like 50% or 30% of performance improvement just by simply using Torch Compile is like super impressive, especially if you are like in a production environment where cost matters or time. And how does um, Torch Compile work? So basically the first step is the graph acquisition where our model is rewritten in like subgraphs and uh, the API basically decides, okay, can I compile the subgraph to be faster and like use optimized kernels, or do I need to use the the eager mode? The second step is uh, step is then graph, uh, graph lowering, where I like select the hardware specific um, kernels, and then we have the graph compilation part, where basically the kernels are executed on our um, hardware. And here we can like see different backends. So I think earlier they they announced that Onyx is supported as well, and of course we can use the the torch inductor, which is like the the default compile backend. OK, so why, why, where are we ending up? So with just one line of code uh, to add, PyTorch 2 gives a speed up of 1.5 to 2x in training uh, transformer models. This is the most exciting thing uh, since mixed precision training was introduced at Seth, or Seth Silvan, who was the previous core maintainer of transformers. So that sounds super exciting, but we'll see if that, that's, that's really true. Before we 
move on. Um, it's also super exciting that we have uh, support for um, DDP and FSDP. So of course, transformer models became and are still becoming bigger and bigger. So most of them are not fitting on a single GPU. So we want to, of course, make sure that we benefit from the, the new exciting features when using bigger models. So it's already exciting to see that in PyTorch 2, we had support for it. And also with uh, the coming releases, um, I think FSTP will even get more performance improvements. So we can s hope and see that uh, training bigger models will become faster and like more cost effective. Okay, then, then to the, the hiking phase ecosystem. So we are not having a lot of time, so I like try to focus on like the most important parts, um, which might be interesting for you. So hiking phase, um, we have basically three different parts or four different parts in the company. One of it is the, the platform, who most of you maybe have used in the past, where we have our like hosted models, where we have the demos, where we have data sets, we have discussions, you can open pull requests, then we have of course the open source ecosystem with transformers, diffusers, PEF, accelerate data sets, all of those libraries together um, work perfectly fine and uh, with the Hiking Phase Hub, and then we also have our community. Without a community, Hiking Phase definitely wouldn't be there where we are now. And part of the community is, of course, education. We have a lot of like community creator um, creating blog posts, videos on how you can use Hiking Phase and Transformers. And then another part is research where either researchers at Hugging Phase, at Meta, or like AWS, or everywhere are using Hugging Phase and transformers or the transformers architecture to, to move the whole ecosystem forward. And then we, we have our product and partner section where we work with um, cloud partners, hardware partners to make it easier um, to run Hugging Face models on public clouds or different hardware platforms. So the Hugging Face models are currently over 300,000 different available public models. You can directly use either to continue pre-training, to fine tune, you find all of the popular generative AI models with the, the new Mistral model or the Sapphire model, which was uh, trained last week at Hiking Phase. You can find the Replit coding model. We have, of course, Llama, uh, Stable Diffusion. So if you are thinking about starting with uh, generative AI on a general transformer models, like definitely go to the Hiking Phase Hub and see maybe if there's already a pre-trained model for your language or domain, or if there's a fine-tuned model for your use case you want to use, or in case you just want to try something out, you will, I'm pretty sure you will find a model to, to, to get going. And the second part, of course, when you train models is you need data sets. And also at Hiking Phase, we have like a data sets hub, which is similar to the model hub, except that it's for data sets. And I think like what is like pretty cool and update we made uh, a few months ago is that on the left side, um, you have this, this filters. And those filters are exactly the same for the model. So if we go back two slides, we have the models uh, filter, where you can filter on different domains and languages. So if you are working um, on computer vision, and if you want to trainer models for uh, dev estimation, you can like filter the pre-trained models for dev estimation and then like see, okay, is there already a pre-trained checkpoint? Fine, nice, I can start with it. Is there a data set I can get started to like um, try to see if my training loop works, try to like create some kind of baseline, get suggestions, okay, how do I need to structure my data set before like really investing time to, into it? And now in data sets, we have the same um, filters you can apply to, to find the right data set for, for your use case. Okay, and then like uh, for fine tuning, I wanted to do like the session uh, live and hands on, but I got told that we should stick with the slides in case something uh, is not going to work or if I'm not having like internet connection. So we are going to walk through step by step on like what you would need to do. It's like super simple, I promise. And then if you like uh, want to try it out, like we have uh, um, the notebook and code is available on GitHub. So if you are curious or want to reproduce the results uh, we are getting like you will, you will find the code there. So like of course the first step is like to set up our environment. We need to make sure that we install PyTorch and definitely now with PyTorch 2.1 make sure that you have the right CUDA version since I think the default one is 12.1 which at least my environment got broken when I updated it. So make sure that you, you install the right CUDA version and of course we need the, the Hugging Face libraries. Here we will use transformers. Um, with, for our models, we use data sets, we use Accelerate, uh, Evaluate, uh, TensorBoard to lock our um, training results and scikit-learn since we want to do also uh, evaluation during the training. And the first step uh, when you, we want to train a model is of course to load and prepare the data set. We are going to, or we will use here in the example, the Banking 77 data set, which is a text classification data set 
for uh, customer support in finance. So you have uh, 13,000 different customer um, requests uh, with 77 classes. That's why it's called Banking 77 uh, for like uh, credit card fraud, um, card loss, and all of the different um, classes. And it's super simple to, to load our data set. We're using the load data set method. What's going to happen behind the scenes is that the API is loading the data set from the Hiking Face Hub, um, and then we can, can use it. And if we want to train transformer models, I think in general any machine learning model, we need to convert our inputs into numbers. And with the text data set, of course, we have like our um, text. And for, for NLP or for transformers, we want to convert them to input IDs. And that's um, done by using a tokenizer, which first converts, converts the text into um, tokens, and then those tokens into input IDs to the corresponding vocabulary we have in our uh, model. So we are going to use the, the auto tokenizer from transformers, define a small little helper function which applies the, the tokenizer to all of our example. We also uh, apply padding to make sure that all of our examples are at the same length since back then transformers uh, or torch compile only supported uh, static shapes. So we wanted to make sure that all of the input uh, have the same shape to not run into any issues. And then uh, we also like rename a column to match the the, like what the trainer, the hiking face trainer expects. And then we apply it um, with the map function and then like data set basically loops over um, all of the example, to tokenizes the inputs and stores them again in our data set. And then we end up with a, a huge like dictionary of lists with input IDs, token type IDs and attention mask and our labels for the class. And then of course we, we need a model. So we are going to use the Auto model for sequence classification class, which is a, a class from transformers, which allows us to use uh, to load the model from the hub. And then in the middle of the code snippet here, we have something which might look a bit, bit complicated, but it's pretty simple. Normally, a model outputs a class, so like 0, 1, 13, and it's not very like customer friendly. We would like to have uh, output labels which correspond to to some text like credit card fraud or um, yeah, I mean like what we have in the data set. And what we are going to do here is basically we look at our data set, look at the, the text labels of our features, and create a dictionary mapping for label to ID, which is basically credit card fraud equals like ID zero, and then an ID to label dictionary, which uh, is like zero uh, to, to credit card fraud. And that way we can like save it at, uh, after our training and know or like create a more customer friendly output uh, or when we um, deploy the model to production that the, 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 like the front end team is not receiving zero. I need to do the mapping ourselves. We are like storing this information uh, next to our model. And then of course, um, when training machine learning models, evaluation is like more or less critical to know if our model is performing well or not. And we want to do the evaluation during training. So what we are going to do here is like we use the evaluate library, which is a library from, from Hugging Face, which implements a lot of like default um, evaluation metrics. Here we use the DF1 uh, metrics, which is a, a common metrics for text classification, and we define a helper method which um, receives our predicted uh, labels from our model and then applies the F1 evaluation here and computes this. We will use this metric during training, so we are going to evaluate our model during training. Of course, you can do this afterwards, um, but we want to like see the, the performance after each epoch. Okay, so I mean, you might have asked, okay, like that's maybe something you all have done in the past, no mention about PyTorch 2, or like do we need not to use like Torch Compile when loading the model, and in Transformers there are basically two ways to use Torch Compile, or like the PyTorch 2.0 features. You can either directly compile your model, or you can provide it as an argument when training, um, and when using the trainer. And here we have like the, the PyTorch 2.0 specifics, BF16 doesn't fit into like PyTorch 2.0. This was there before. I'm not sure like why I added it there, but we have the torch compile argument. So if you set torch compile to true, you will use all of the, the benefits we talked about it. And that's more or less the only code change you need to do. So if you have a running and working transformers example using the trainer and training arguments, you can like simply add this argument to your training script and you will use PyTorch 2.0 features with Torch compile. Of course, you, you need to install PyTorch too, but that's basically the, the code change you need to make. And then if you want to gain some additional performance, I definitely recommend to use the new 
uh, fused atom uh, WTorch optimizer, so with PyTorch 2.0, PyTorch also integrated uh, a fused atom optimizer, which is faster than the default atom optimizer. I think the original implementation came from NVIDIA from like the Apex project, but it's now natively integrated into Torch, so that's also another nice improvements um, when, when using PyTorch 2 and like newer. And then like additional um, arguments we define is of course like the, the, the batch size, the learning rate, uh, how many epochs we want to train, and then like some um, strategies on, okay, we want to like log um, every 200 steps our training loss. We want to evaluate um, during training after each epoch. We want to, of course, load the best model at the end. This means, okay, if our model after two epochs has a better F1 score, we will load this model after the training is done. And then we, we want to push our model to the hugging phase hub and also report our uh, metrics to, to TensorBoard. And then the last step before we train is basically put everything together into our trainer. We have our model, we have our training arguments, we have our training and evil data set, and then our compute metrics function, and then we can simply run trainer.train, which uses our model, applies the torch compile method, applies all of the other training arguments, uses our um, co uh, tokenized training data set, evaluates after each epoch using uh, the compute metrics and our test set, and then we end up with a repository on the Hugging Phase Hub, which not only has our model assets, also our tra training metrics, since we used uh, the TensorBoard integration, where we can like nicely follow and track our results of our training. Okay, and then how, how much how does it perform compared to, to PyTorch 1? I ran the same training with PyTorch 1.13, and PyTorch 2.0. It's like the only difference was using the Torch compile flag with true, and uh, instead of using a normal atom optimizer, using the diffused atom optimizer. Uh, as an environment, I use the NVIDIA A10 GPU on AWS. We use the same model, which is bird base uncased, our the same training data set, same epoch steps, and we both example use evaluation and checkpointing which have some impact on the overall training time since you need to write something to disk and you also like need uh, to run the evaluation training loop which like changes the, the state of your model. And for PyTorch 1, we got a total duration of 696 seconds, which is a bit more than 11 minutes. We ended up with 33 samples per second uh, with an eval score of 92.87%. And for PyTorch 2, we ended up with 445, uh, 470 five seconds with 65.5 samples and a slightly better evil score. So with like those two changes to like the training arguments with Torch compiled true and the better optimizer, we achieved a 41% improvements to our training compared to PyTorch 1.13. And it's like all, so like you don't need to write custom modeling code. It's like that, that's really it. That's like two lines to either iterate 40% faster. So if you are trying to find the best set of hyperparameters with like learning rate, batch size uh, for your model, you can iterate 40% more. Or you can also like save 40% of cost if you are like using managed service like Azure ML or AWS SageMaker. You basically save 40% of cost, which is like incredible to think about by like as little as we need to do. And then, of course, there's more. Like we, we talked about the Hugging Face ecosystem, which is not only Transformers. PyTorch 2 is supported in Hugging Face diffusers, where we get performance improvements up to 30% on text to image, which includes stable diffusion. We integrated uh, the new STPA um, with the better attention mechanism into Hugging Face Optimum. So you can use uh, or patch your model using the better Transformer API in Optimum to use the, the better intention mechanism, which gives you even more performance improvements. Um, it's available in, in, in uh, Hugging Face Tim, which is the, the popular um, image uh, library for training image models. Uh, here you basically apply the, the torch compile method and you get back like your optimized uh, model. And of course, um, you can use torch.compile on your regular transformer model. So if you're writing your own training loop, you can like keep your own training loop and like basically apply the torch compile um, before um, training your model. Cool. Any any questions? No questions. Okay. Then, like maybe one last word. So, 
If you are interested about generative AI, I definitely recommend to stay in the room. Like Younes and Surab from, from Hugging Face will do another talk about how you easy you can like train a llama model. So definitely stay. <laughs>